Hello, welcome to a very short presentation on centrifugal force. My name is Jos van Krij and in this very short presentation I'm going to show a little bit about centrifugal force and centripetal force and then I'm going to switch over to SOLIDWORKS to show some result graphs that I created with help of uh, 3D CAD. So as I mentioned it's a very short presentation. Here uh, is my first and only sheet of the presentation. Uh, I'm going to have a look at the force that is needed to keep a certain mass in rotation. It's a centripetal force that's needed and it's uh, reacted by, uh, it's balanced by not actually a force. It says here a fictitious force. It's not a force but an acceleration. Uh, an acceleration can be caused by a force and that's what we see here when a, a part is rotating then there's always an acceleration so there's always a force to cause that acceleration as well here we see the the formula that's needed for it it's the the, the force the centripetal force is equal to the mass times the angular velocity squared times the the r so the radius of the mass rotating around the center. So this is the radius here in this image. So now I'm going to make this force visible in SOLIDWORKS and for that I created a part, uh, just a disk and it's rotating around this around this center here, it's a hole, so it's not centered in the origin of the part because if it's the if a part is rotating exactly around the center of mass then there's no centripetal force needed to keep the part in place but if there is if there there is a distance between the center of mass and the center of rotation then you can imagine there's a force needed here to keep the part in place so it's quite a, a heavy part that I've got over here you can have a look at the mass first in the mass properties and it's a part of 335 kilograms. So now I'm going to rotate that part on a on a flat plane, so the gravity doesn't really matter in this case. And I'm going to start the calculation. There's a constant torque at this point. It's a a torque of 10 newton meter. And as you can see, it keeps on accelerating. up until this point I'm gonna have a look so here it's uh, 10,000 newton millimeters so it's 10 newton multiplied by meters so now I've done the calculation and I get two graphs here first you see here is the reaction force in the Z direction the Z direction is here so you can see it takes quite a bit of force and uh, takes quite a bit of force to keep the part in place and this force is getting bigger and bigger when the rotation gets faster and faster. Then on the other graph, I've got the reaction force as a resultant, so the, the, complete, uh, the complete value of the reaction force, not in the z direction, but in the combined z, z and x direction. I can make this one visible as well with an arrow while it's rotating let me see how to do that okay. here I can show the vector of the reaction force and when I replay the calculation then I can see this vector increasing in size and it's always pointing to the center of rotation you can see here so it's a, it, the yellow arrow is rotating and it's pointing to the center of rotation, the center of mass, I'm sorry, and it's increasing with a, a squared a graph, so a, a quadratic formula, and what, what you can see is that the higher the, the angular velocity is, the higher the reaction force is, and it's a, a, a quadratic function which we just saw previously in the PowerPoint presentation as well. So it's um, the centrifugal force and the centripetal force. 
it's uh, the mass times the angular velocity to the square times the radius and we can see that in the graphs of this animation as well so that's the end of my presentation hopefully the the centrifugal force became a little bit clearer in this presentation and maybe see you in another presentation